What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. I'm going to show you guys something that might be a little scandalous on the part of a manufacturer slash designer. And I'm talking about the Yeehaw 3D printer. I just did a live stream on one earlier. And in that time, I managed to maybe break both of them. And it doesn't even make sense how or why I did it. So, I made up a jig earlier this morning that allows me to connect the Yeehaw 3D and power it off of the BK Precision over here. And in that video, I described the fact that at 12 volts, it's gonna be pulling a lot of amps. I ran it at 12 volts just to be safe. I said it also probably goes up to 24 volts just because. Well, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a deep dive because both these devices eventually broke. Yeah, or they're acting like they're broke. They're pulling max current on this guy when they definitely shouldn't be. So let me go ahead and I'll show you what's going on inside this 3D printer, some of the things I found, and uh, maybe how we're gonna remedy this. Let's do it. All right, here's one of my Yeehaw 3Ds. This is a brand new one that has not been used whatsoever. The print head is still absolutely brand new. Earlier today, I plugged it in, 12 volts, standard polarity, and it worked absolutely fine. And now, when I go to plug it in, you see right over there, we're at 13 volts, zero on the current. I think I have overload protection set currently at, uh, I think it's set at three amps, three and a half amps. Interestingly enough, now it's powering up because it was just doing what this one's going to do. Let's plug it in. It was doing this earlier run at three to four amps current maxed out he's noticed my voltage dropped down to one volt because that means that this guy has a power supply is it's maxed out and i'm taking a look at this guy this is what's inside it this is inside the uh the yeehaw 3d printer so this is a uh it's a custom system on a chip the mediatek that is the uh what the MT7688. This is a system on a chip and this runs the uh, WRT, open WRT OS and it keeps all the amazing little settings on this guy over here. Now earlier today uh, I said that I had the app downloaded for this guy, the original OEM app. However, the OEM app requires me to log into some mythical server which does not exist anymore. So now I'm a little upset. So if uh, I'm trying to log into an, uh, a server that doesn't exist anymore, that means that are these guys really garbage? They're not usable anymore? No, not at all, in fact, um, because we're going to go into it a little bit deeper. <sighs> so these guys here were a type of system that was developed for crowdfunding and crowdfunding sources, they're, they're not gonna invest into the OS and into a lot of the other things. I mean, hell, even this, uh, this what, 7688AN chip, the system on a chip, it is, it's not custom, all right? It's something that does exist, and it's a $13 computer with a custom breakout board. This guy right here, custom breakout board. All right, let's flip it around again. This custom breakout board, it says over by the AC power in, clearly, it says right here, plus 12 to 24 volts. That is the incoming power. It should be absolutely fine with up to 24 volts to power all this stuff. It does have some voltage regulation and it should be able to compensate. So this printer right here is currently on overcurrent, but none of this is plugged in. See down here, you can see at my DC import, I have it unplugged. And yet, you guys just seen it, it is running at full overcurrent. So something's going on with this little chip right here. And the amazing thing is, is this printer over here was doing the exact same thing. And I never ran this one higher than 12 volts. So that little board, that little chip, that DC input, it has got something on there that is either defective or it's purposely defective because if it runs at maximum current, it's going to blow up the external DC power supply that came with the unit, or it's gonna make it go into overcurrent protection mode and the thing will never boot up. Either way, 
that little board's going to give you problems and it could be possibly designed to be that way. So one of the things I want to show you guys about this Yeehaw printer is that over here it has, interestingly enough, a Wi-Fi. So that system on a chip that I showed you has a Wi-Fi that it puts off. That means that since I have the password and everything, I can technically log into this device with my cell phone or with my laptop computer. And with the laptop, we can find out more information. Coming over here to said laptop, I want to show you guys something. When I connected to it with uh, Wi-Fi, you can come in here and you can run a IP config and IP config will tell you what your gateway is, which is the printer's address. And just like your router or anything else that you connect to, this here is normally a point of login and it is. So when I typed it in my browser, that exact IP address, it brought me to a Octoprint interface where I can actually upload files. You can see some of them right here that were on it. And because the printer's off, you're not gonna see anything at the moment, but I have access to the hothead. I can, I can control a lot of things on here. I actually have a fully functional printer because Octoprint, there's actually apps for almost every mobile device for Octoprint if you run uh, a full registered version on here. You know, one that is the latest and greatest. That one is not. So I'm having some complications and I found some workarounds like turning, going into the settings, which I have up here. There's a little SD card that was on that board at the top and in that are these packages and the config. And I can come in here and I can go in and edit the configuration, which means I can also reset the admin account by setting it to uh, first time login true. I can then, on the first login, the printer will ask you for enter to create an admin account and that will reset all this admin data that's already in there. Cool stuff. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the system here was not designed by these people. The board, the breakout board was apparently, could be just silk screened and another mock off. But the system on a chip, that's a $13 computer, that is an over the counter part. It's running Octoprint, which means that gives me some options for web interface. Now these printers here, I could use today. What it would take is a laptop, logging into the printer, and sending the print job via that web interface that I just showed you, that 192.168.100.1, that will get me into the Yeehaw printer and allow me to upload files. And from there, I can adjust the hot end temperature, I can adjust the print speed, I can actually control the X, Y, and Z. I can control all that and I've already done it. So I don't really need the Yeehaw app. As initially figured, I can just use the Octoprint. Now the overall goal is to utilize this board, but this board might be giving me some problems. So I might convert this board into a Raspberry Pi and Octoprint, the latest and greatest version actually runs off of Raspberry Pi and they sell kits to refit all this, not for this particular model, but to build your own 3D printer. It might require me splicing in some cables and stuff, but that's easy. <laughs> I can do that. Either way, either I use my laptop and a Wi-Fi interface in the existing system, or I just go ahead and I replace the innards, one or the other. I'm gonna experiment a little bit more on these guys. I am gonna try and burn a version of Raspberry Pi OS with Octoprint, and hopefully this guy will run it, because this guy, while it does run OpenWRT OS system, I'm gonna see if maybe it can run Pi OS. Hopefully it will. I don't know, it's, it's kind of a gamble. But if it can't, maybe I'll just convert it over to a smaller Raspberry Pi, like a Pi 1 or a Pi 2 or something like that. Something cheap, something inexpensive and tiny. But guys, that is the Yeehaw printer. I'll give you a little bit of an update to show you that it is possible if you ever find one of these Yeehaw printers laying around, which a lot of people are throwing them out because it just is what it is. You know, a lot of people don't know the OS. You can log into it with a computer, especially a laptop, and then go in to the web interface, 
and you can upload files and from there you can also go and do other things like monitors temperature move it around you can do a whole bunch of stuff it's pretty cool anyway update on the yeehaw printer if you find one good on you you can probably get them for free if not they're in the trash and if you do find one explore tear it apart like i've done here what's the hurt it's already broke right thanks for watching guys